Today I'm going to do a video at a follower's request. They want me to do a video on Hawking radiation. And I've been meaning to anyway, so uh, Hawking radiation isn't real, is the title of this video. When Hawking came up with the idea, he was a brilliant physicist at understanding general relativity theory, but a novice at understanding quantum field theory in terms of what happens with the particle pair model. And that happens to be what I'm an expert in. So I and many others have been picking apart his theory ever since he came up with it. So number one, virtual photons don't exist. The biggest problem is in this theory is based on the idea that you have a quantum pair of photons where one photon enters the black hole and the other one escapes and that, it, that one that escapes must take away energy from the black hole. Now, the wavy guys have gotten a hold of this and say, oh, we can have waves without a medium, so you don't have to have actual particles. You can just have waves with no particles, no medium that that interact with the black hole. No, you can't. In order to have to have waves, you first have to have a particular medium, which means you have to have something there. And so, I'll go through this using strictly particular approach. So part A of this is the quantum field energy is E equals HF. The energy is Planck's constant times the frequency, or H nu if you prefer. A photon energy is also E equals HF. So two photons is not a quantum fluctuation because there's too much energy. It's a physical impossibility to have a pair of photons as a quantum fluctuation, as a virtual particle. Now what happens instead, photons are polarizable and they also produce rotating magnetic and electric fields, which requires that they have a dipole. That's why Louis de Broglie realized back in the 1930s that a photon behaves like it has a rotating electron-positron dipole each half wavelength. And so that's the way we have to think about it. In quantum field theory, if you have a rotating electric and magnetic field, the field will conserve, the quantum field will conserve the electric fields. So, if there wasn't a dipole already there, one would be induced there. And it's that dipole that has the correct energy, E equals HF, or the electron positron. Or it can be a proton, any proton. It can be conceivably any direct fermion pair that has positive and negative charge. So that's what the real quantum fluctuations are, and that's, so that's what we have to deal with. But electrons and positrons and protons and antiprotons don't travel at the speed of light, and anything that's at the event horizons has its clock rate slow to effectively zero. So unless it can travel at the speed of light, it can't escape the event horizon. So if you have an electron-positron quantum fluctuation where one of them happens to cross the event horizon, they're still stuck there. They're not going anywhere. And you're only going to get a photon if you have simultaneously an electron-positron pair and a positron-electron pair cross the event horizon together and the electron and positron that stay on the outer side annihilate with each other producing a photon. As I've shown that little drawing. That's the only way you get a photon coming off. So it's not as common 
as what Hawking would have you suspect. And another issue with the electron and protons is their mass comes from the quantum field. That the proton's mass is equal to the quantum field energy they displace. So they would have you believe that the black hole has to give up energy so the electron that stays outside can gain mass. But that's not true. It's the quantum field that gives up the energy. Because it's the quantum field energy that's displaced that produces the mass. And I've done other videos on that I can uh, link to uh, in the description. And the same thing is true with an electron. An uh, electron acts like a shell, a quantum shell with the Compton wavelength. That's where its magnetic moment comes from. But that's where the mass comes from too. It acts like the shell that produces the magnetic moment also displaces quantum fluctuations. So right there we see a huge error in Hawking's thinking about where the energy comes from. And it's even more so that the quantum field can donate energy. In the Hawking radiation, he said, oh, energy conservation means that the black hole has to lose energy. No, it doesn't. We know from the Casimir effect that two plates can be pushed together by the quantum field. The quantum field can do work. We know from beta decay that it can donate energy. And that's because the true way that beta decay happens, so you have a neutron decay, is a quantum electron-positron interacts with the neutron. The positron gets annihilated and the electron is left outside. The energy range of quantum electron-positrons that can interact is limited. And it is the quantum fluctuations that donate their energy to the interaction that gives us the betas, the electrons that are free, have a range of energies that's the energy left over. The whole idea that beta decay is not triggered by anything and this uh, energy distribution emerges from nowhere is false. It, you have to have a triggering event and you have to have something causing the energy distribution. And those are quantum fluctuations. You can't just have a neutron taking away the excess, a neutrino taking away the excess energy at the end and say that all's well. Physics doesn't work that way. So the assumption that the energy has to come from the black hole is false. So two major false assumptions as part of the basis for Hawking radiation. Now, another thing he missed is the quantum tunneling can go both ways. And there's been a paper on this where you can have tunneling outward as well as inward when you have a pair of electron-positron pair. You can also have annihilation, essentially quantum tunneling going on, where if you have an electron above the event horizon, you can have an electron-positron pair where the positron is outside and the electron inside, and the positron annihilates with the electron, and it makes it appear like the electron jumped below the event horizon. And if you have an electron inside the event horizon, you can have it appear to jump outside. So these quantum tunneling interactions are also happening because the material uh, at the black hole event horizon is stuck there, stuck in time, in real time. I mean, you can go back and use event horizon time where 100 billion years happens in an instant. But in real time, our time as an outside observer, the material is stuck there. And it can be jumping back and forth all the time. And this brings up a problem. The quantum field in one, in my 
little pinky has more energy than all the mass in the entire universe. Wheeler calculated that in mass equivalent units, 10 to the 94th grams per centimeter squared. So if that energy was being absorbed by a black hole through this quantum tunneling process, then the black hole would very rapidly expand and engulf the entire universe. On the other hand, if the black hole were losing energy to the quantum field, the black hole would very rapidly collapse to nothing. And based on what we observe of black holes, they don't do either one. They're fairly stable. They're not interacting this way with the quantum field where they're blowing up or, or shrinking to nothing instantaneously because the quantum field's interacting this way. And that tells us a, a couple different possibilities. Either there's no interaction of this type, the black hole is not gaining or losing energy by interacting with the quantum field at all. Or it is gaining and losing energy, but it's equal. The amount of gains and the amount of loses is equal or nearly equal. So close that it has an extremely minor effect relative to the amount of energy in the quantum field itself. Because we're looking at such a, so many orders of magnitude in ratio of energy. So that's what we have that's really going on with quantum fluctuations at the event horizon. It's much more complex than what Hawking imagined, but also he didn't get the energy conservation principles right. So what he th thinks he thought is invalid. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I may try to do more on what happens at the event horizon, um, but I'll, I need to prepare for that. And if you do like this video, please like, share it with your physicist friends, subscribe so you see the next one. And then I also have a couple books. I have uh, two books on quantum field theory, another one on particle theory. If you want to learn more about quantum field theory and particles, I discuss some of these things in, in both my particle books and my quantum field theory books. Um, and I'm a retired independent researcher, so if you buy one of my books, that helps support me in my retirement, so I appreciate that. So thanks for watching.